Let's talk Florida Gator recruiting. UF recruiting has picked up towards the end of summer. A big addition just today, four-star wide receiver Nashawn Montgomery out of Miami Central just committed to the Florida Gators about two hours ago. Gators vaulting up the rankings. I mean, remember, two months ago, we were talking about the Gators in the 50s, but now UF is creeping up on a top 15 class just in time for the season. Top 10 might not be out of the question if the Gators can have a good season on the field. I got Keith Niebuhr here from Gators Online. We're going to hit on a few of the big names that UFs can play with as they hit head toward the season. But first, guys, hit subscribe to the On3 Recruits channel, the best recruiting channel on all of YouTube. All right, let's bring in the great Keith Niebuhr. Now, Nashawn Montgomery was UF's 14th commitment toward the 2025 class. But as I said, some big names still out there. Keith, let's start with Ty Jackson on three's number one linebacker. And he's already said, I'm in no rush to decide. I want to see what happens on the field this season. He's not going to make his decision till December. So Ty Jackson, is this a guy that UF can keep in state? I mean, I know they can with a good season, but what have they done with Ty Jackson to put themselves in this position? Well, first and foremost, I think of all the remaining targets out there, he very well could be Florida's number one overall yeah. guy on the board. Regardless of position, regardless of side mm -hmm. of ball, he might be the number one guy. He's an outstanding linebacker, as you said, number one in the country for on three, and he's from that West Palm Beach, Florida area. So how has Florida gotten into the mix? Well, first and foremost, he thinks he can play early at the University of Florida. That's significant. He's bonded with the coaching staff, and in particular, uh, defensive coordinator Austin Armstrong, who's really taken the lead in this recruitment. Also, him and his family really seem to vibe with Gainesville and the University of Florida and all yeah. things encompassed in that. And one of the things they really like at the University of Florida is the Gator Made program, which is something that prepares uh, the, the football players and other athletes for life beyond the arena. And, you know, sometimes you hear that and you don't think much of it, but they have made a point to bring that up in each and every single interview him, his father. This is significant to them. They want to make sure that their son has something going on after football. So you add it up. Uh, he's not a kid that talks a lot. He's not out there laughing it up and, and mm -hmm. calling all the other recruits and all that. He's a very singular, he's very focused on on, on the mission at hand. Uh, so he's not into all that recruiting stuff, but he has really clicked with a lot of things in Gainesville. And that is keeping Florida very much in it. And, and maybe even uh, you could say that Florida is certainly one of the favorites and maybe yeah. even the favorite as we get into the uh, week one of the season. Yeah, I think that's safe to say. Now, the next prospect we're going to talk about, DJ Pickett. Yes, he committed yeah. to LSU. But back in May, he told on three this about the Gators. Quote, I told them, all I just need to see is y'all improving and just winning. Well, Pickett decided to make his decision in July, so he didn't get to see the Gators win yet. But he will get to see the Gators because he's going to be in the swamp when UF plays Miami in just about five or six days. How important is this season for DJ Pickett and the Gators? Well, first of all, we need to point out he's supposed to be there. He has said in repeated interviews he will be at the swamp on August 31st. But, of course, until they actually show up, who knows? We hey, also if don't I had it. a free ticket to that game, there's no way I would miss it. So, especially well, if I lived in Zephyr just, Hills just well, about 45 true. minutes that's, away. That's true, but you never take it for granted in recruiting. You, you need to see them first before you – you say, okay. Sure, but, yes, uh, you're right. What he, this is a good, a good measuring stick, stick game for him, and I'll tell you why. Because Miami is another school that was re heavily recruiting D.J. Pickett and continues to keep the foot apparently on the gas with him. So he'll get to watch both those teams go at it. Mm -hmm. uh, also, we don't know yet whether this is going to be an unofficial visit or an official visit. Uh, well, he has said uh, different things on different occasions, but – uh, again, getting him there is important. He wants to see an improved Florida team, obviously, but he also wants to see what Florida secondary does under the direction of first-year secondary coach Will Harris. Now, Will Harris and DJ Pickett have, have clicked. They're getting along great, but he, doesn't, he still doesn't know. I mean, he's getting to know Will Harris, but he hasn't really gotten to know what a Will Harris secondary looks like yet. So Saturday's game against Miami would give him the first chance to see what they're going to do on the field this year. Are they, do they tackle better? Are they better in coverage? What do they look like? And then also he can gauge the secondary at Florida and also Miami and see how he would fit in with that group and you know what are his chances of playing early because that's obviously on the mind of all these guys. So, yes, Florida can make a move potentially with him. Potentially, we'll see. Now, Josh, here's the thing. Florida's going to need a big season to impress a lot of kids. The question yeah. is, 
what's the right number of wins? Does six wins really impress a lot of people? Well, even with that schedule, I think it's eight. That. I think it's eight. I think it's to ten. I, think it's eight I mean, if they can I get th- eight, I think some of the guys that we're we're talking about and are about to talk about will be in play. If they can get to ten, I think we can yeah. expect some some major flips. Well, right now everything is sort of a leap of faith. As the coaching staff, it's hey, trust us. This is what we're building. Eight wins shows you, mm-hmm. hey, they went from you know six and six wins to five wins to eight wins against that kind of schedule. That's conceivably yeah. a ten or eleven win season against a normal schedule. So. I think that's what he's going to need to see. And then, Josh, the other element of that is if you win a lot of games, you have to assume and imagine that high-level donors are going to step up their games when it comes to NIL donations. So it kind of can all work in concert. And, And look, for DJ Pickett, he's the number one cornerback in the country, Josh. He is going to command a lot of NIL uh worth right yeah and especially also, to budge him off that commitment yes of course that's right so you're, you're talking this is not going to be an easy one he needs to see florida win he mm-hmm. needs to know that the nil situations are at the very least going to going to be comparable so there's a lot of things in play here but it starts with florida looking good looking good in the secondary and winning some football games yeah all right i know you said ty jackson is probably the most important yeah. prospect on the board but also every team needs major help at offensive line And Florida has two guys that I'm looking at. Tavares Dice, who's committed to Auburn. He's out of Georgia. And then Solomon Thomas. He's out of Jacksonville. He's the five-star interior offensive lineman committed to FSU. Uh, Gators are involved with both of them to some degree. Which one do you think, if the Gators have a good season, they have a better shot at flipping? Boy, you, you would think Tavares Dice on the surface, right? Because he's the one that's still talking up Florida. I mean, look, he's talking up Auburn, too. I need to be fair there. He's... He loves Auburn, yeah. and and he he's he said in interviews with me that there's a lot of things that are e- sort of equal between those two teams, and the one thing the two programs, the one thing that has given Auburn the edge over Florida is he just feels a little bit more comfortable there. So a few more additional trips to Florida could maybe even out that comfort level. But let's just hypothetically say that he's always going to be a little bit more comfortable at Auburn. So how could Florida then leapfrog past Auburn? Mm-hmm. Well, you could do that with. An impressive season, impressive offensive line play, offensive line development. So the left side of Florida's line, you've got some guys like Austin Barber at tackle and Najee Harris at at guard, and then you've got Jake Slaughter at center. Those are guys that have really been developed by this staff, and if they take even a step or two forward this season and Florida looks good, Mm -hmm. you've got kind of the double whammy. Tavares Dice is looking at Florida and saying, okay, they're looking good on the field, but also they're developing guys that play my position. So, again, Josh, you're going to need that to have happen, and it would help if Auburn didn't look so good themselves. Okay, <laughs> I mean, there's a, it's not easy to flip guys like this yeah. now. Yeah, Solomon but Auburn, Thomas, I feel like Auburn, there's something to Auburn and Florida. They really love to throw haymakers at each other yeah. throughout you know, the summer, the fall, into the winter. It just never stops between those two teams. Well, you know, I mean, and again, you know, they've got proximity to home with Tavares. Like, look, Auburn's got a lot of things working in its favor in that recruitment. But Florida is the one school that he is kind of given love to, the, the mm-hmm. only other school. So Florida's still somewhat in that. And I, I wouldn't be surprised if he shows up at the Florida-Miami game. Now, Solomon Thomas, on the other hand, doesn't seem to be giving Florida much love at all lately. In fact, it's all fsu Or LSU, uh, yeah. And then some LSU, that's mm-hmm. right. But, again, now he's got friends that play on the offensive line at Florida. And if the offensive line of the Gators, we speak of Rod Kearney, who's from Jacksonville, who may have an extended role this season. Austin Barber, the starting left tackle, he's from Jacksonville. So if the Florida offensive line, again, and the team itself, you you assume, if Josh, for the team to win, the offensive line is going to have to play well. So it probably works together. So if they can catch his eye, now he has told other outlets that, hey, I'm I'm not going back to Florida, but he told me that, that he hasn't ruled out returning to Florida. So we'll see if he can get back to Gainesville. And then, you know, obviously FSU's offensive line, it was one game. It was one game. But FSU's offensive line did not look great in the opener against Georgia Tech. And then also, so Florida's selling development. And Florida State, if you're Florida, you're going to preach to him. They they haven't had an offensive lineman drafted in five or six years. So those are kinds of things. Now, obviously, Florida State may have somebody drafted this year. Uh, You know, we'll, we'll have to see how that all plays out. But if you're a school trying to flip a guy, you've got to come up with a list of things to sell to people. So Florida's going to try to sell Solomon Thomas on 
development and direction of the program. Same thing with Tavares Dice. But again, you got to go out and do it now. He's got to mm-hmm. see something from them. He's been impressionable throughout the recruiting process. Every time he visits Florida, he seems to talk up the Gators, but they've got to get him there more and they've got to show him something. Otherwise, I think he's going to be hard to flip because quite frankly, he is locked in pretty good with uh, Florida State's offensive line coach, Alex Atkins, who he speaks so highly of, and they have really connected. Uh, to, bre- to break that bond, to beat that bond, Florida's going to have to go really do something. And it may come down to the end. They may have to go to Tallahassee and do something in that game against FSU, too. There's a lot of things that are going to have to happen here. But I just wouldn't rule him out entirely because yeah. he's so impressionable. All right, Gator fans, what do you think? We previewed some of the top players that the Gators could be in the mix for if they have a big season. But what constitutes a big season? How many wins does this Florida team need to land some of the guys that we just talked about? Let us know. Comment section below. And also, who do you think is the most important target still on the board? Let me and Keith know. Comment section below. Well, you've made it to the end of today's video, but there's hundreds more videos on the On3 Recruits channel for you to check out. And also, while you're here, hit subscribe.